all your life working with companies and with governments and, and in this whole issue of captivity and captive dolphins and rehabilitating dolphins. Have you come across such a stubborn company as Gunting? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, well, SeaWorld, yeah, they stand out. <laughs> they stand out. But I think this one, I think this one may may be the most arrogant. we I've, I've dealt with personally, and I'm just getting involved in this. But I, and I'm, I'm leaving tomorrow. But I will take Resorts World with me and talk about it and do whatever it is I can do and hope that the shareholders will listen. Sometimes I find myself on the Oprah Winfrey show or on Anderson Cooper or Larry King or some of these big talk shows, and I'll be talking about them and asking people not to buy a ticket. The solution to this problem is don't buy a ticket for a dolphin show. We, the consumers, have all the power. That industry is based on supply and demand just like any other product, Coca-Cola or whatever. And so if we're responsible consumers, we can win. Uh, if I'm wearing ivory, I am me, I'm the, I'm the problem, the consumer. Not the guy in the jungle with the shotgun, me the consumer. If I'm buying Carl, the consumer has all the power. So that's what we have to do. Don't wait for the government. Governments protect corporations, not people and other animals. We have to do this work, and we're doing it tonight. I firmly believe in education for, to, to spread the word about captivity and the welfare of animals, but I feel that one of the biggest challenges that people face is um, talking to people who have, not, not just the average person who have no background in animal welfare, but the people who have already so-called moved to the dark side, the people who have actually been working with, with dolphins before. So I personally have a friend who's who is a dolphin trainer at the Dolphin Lagoon in Sentosa. And I find that discussions with her always go round and round, but we always end up nowhere. Sometimes it becomes philosophical. So they, they believe in what they see. They, they, don't, they don't read up about researchers, about long documents about animal welfare. So they, they believe in what they see. And if the audiences go to a, to a dolphin show, they see the music, that's what they believe. So I feel that that's the biggest challenge um, when it comes to education. So... And also, one of the, the things that this friend of mine has mentioned to me is that if, if dolphins are smart enough to relearn how to fish in the wild, then I feel that they are, my friend said that she feels that um, dolphins are smart enough and versatile enough, being intelligent animals, that they can adapt to a captive environment. So my question is, how versatile are these animals, being smart animals, and also... Um, what defines the different species that are more adaptable to a captive environment? Uh, which are the most adaptive to a captive, envi captive environment? Yeah. Yeah, none of them really. None of them belong in captivity. There's no, there's no reason to put them in captivity. We've been doing research in captivity since 1938 at Marine Land in St. Augustine. That was the first dolphinarium in Florida where I live. So we've been doing this research since 1938 and we learned or should have learned that we're talking about a sonic creature in a concrete box and they don't belong there. I can't grasp what argument is missing. Why do they insist on still going through with their plans? It's not too late to turn. I struggle with the same question. <laughs> I, I, I really question at this point why do they need the dolphins? They have they are so they have more money than God. <laughs> I mean, it, it can't be about money. They may they make half a billion dollars in the last quarter without dolphins. It, it's somebody at the top. Uh, sometimes it takes you a while to figure this out, and some of the people who are involved in trafficking in dolphins from the Solomon Islands. Ocean Embassy is their name. You can go to their website. They were in Panama trying to capture 80 dolphin and do a big... They bought the land. Uh, the consultant who's here, Robin Friday, works for them. In fact, he's the president of the... And now he works for uh, Resorts World. 
uh, I couldn't figure out what, what the motivation was because the president of the country was behind it and, and his wife. And the mayor of uh, Panama City was not for it. And he was on our side. The city was divided. And uh, the mayor gave me the key to the city and a, made me an honorary member. And we had thousands of protesters in the streets to stop the capture of these dolphins. And the same question came up. Why are they doing this? And it turns out the, president's, the, 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 the president and his wife have an autistic child and they think that dolphins can heal through dolphin-assisted therapy, and they have been taking this child to the Havana Aquarium in Cuba. And so Ocean Embassy sold them this bill of goods. They were going to open up a hospital, you know, so dolphins can heal everybody, and we're going to do conservation. But first we have to capture 80 dolphins from the wild to do this conservation. And, of course, nobody bought it, and they ran them out of there, and they went to... Solomon Islands. So what, what's behind uh, the dolphins here? Somebody up at the top, this is a great idea, they're bored, maybe. They have so much money that, you know, this is what they want. People like that get what they want. You know, a 500-pound gorilla sits wherever a 500-pound gorilla wants to sit. And, and, and that's how it works. You're rich and powerful, and you're used to getting what you want. That's what's behind it. It's not for the good of Singapore. There's nothing in it for Singapore. Singapore is not going to look green getting capturing dolphins from the wild. That's not going to help Singapore. It's not going to help the stockholders at Resort World. It may be the owner. There's a, one man who is the owner. Maybe it's him. And maybe his attitude is, I, I don't want to lose this. You know, I, uh, I'm going to say face. But I don't know that, I'm guessing. You, I'm, I, just like you, I don't know. I wonder at this point why they would go forward with such a bad idea that's so obviously wrong. Capturing 25 dolphins like that, and they say they didn't separate mothers from babies, well, that's impossible. It wasn't a violent capture, that's impossible. And uh, All captures are violent. A nonviolent capture is an oxymoron. <laughs> so that all is coming out. That's all going to come out. And, you know, they still have time to say, look, we made a mistake. We reconsidered this. Yeah, it's in the best interest of this country. It's going to make this country look really green. It's going to employ a lot of people. Uh, we can take the dolphins back to the Solomon Islands and work together with those folks who are unemployed and We'll, we'll make a movie out of it, and it'll be great, and that'll be real education. They have that option. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Rick, you want to read your... Oh, okay. Your final this thoughts, mean, This must mean we're concluding because I, 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 uh, I like to read this last paragraph in this book. You look like a professor now, actually. Yeah. I realized after I wrote this book, I only had to write this last paragraph not the whole damn book <laughs> in a world where so much that is wild and free has already been lost to us we must leave these beautiful mammals free to swim as they will and must they do us no harm and wish us none and we should let them alone Thank you.